Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are The Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. And she came in here with smoke. Ready for smoke. She told us to put some respect on her movie. I'm she not did. special enough, apparently. Lead I'm away. Not special enough. <laughs> What I up, y'all? I see y'all lucky. Hall. I love y'all. And she was like, so y'all know y'all the only two, the only interview I've done that y'all ain't seen my movie yet. I feel yeah. like the only black person yeah. in America who has not seen Queen and Slim yet. <laughs> I really do no, feel that way. No, Amer- no. Y'all been invited to see it. Y'all y'all are part of a special group of black people that's been invited to come see it early. Really? Can tell Did we get the black people of the nation. Yes. Did they get invited? Thank you. Look at the brother. He feel bad. He didn't to, tell us. He over not- here like, don't embarrass yourself. Now, <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Don't 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 ask that question on camera, cause then I gotta do the sheepish like, yeah, it's okay. It's Lala, right. Lala had a screening this weekend. She mm-hmm. did tell me to come to come through. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Queen and Slim, Queen and Slim, We're getting rave reviews. That's right, yeah, it's critically exciting. acclaimed. Yeah, it's a very trailer exciting. looks amazing. It's saying best you. movie of the year. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. The one that y'all haven't seen. <laughs> trailer looks amazing. Yeah, trailer's great. Lena. Trailer looks great. The posters are everywhere. Yes, yes. Black love. Yes. Black people killing cops. What's better than that? Yes, you know? yes, yes. Um, all that. Yeah. No, I mean, no. Seriously, like the energy has been crazy. It's, it's been phenomenal, and this it's just been a it's been a crazy year, as y'all know. Um, you know, and I think to me it's just sort of like, you know, I think people have kind of got an opportunity to watch me grow up in a weird way. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah. from when y'all met me and. You know, I've sort of grown a lot since then. And I think to me, I'm just sort of evolving as an artist and really trying to leave my mark and plant my flag and really just do it for us, though. You know, I said the other day, I was like, I love black people unconditionally. And I think um, a lot of my work is going to be to make sure people remember that we were here. Let's, have, let me, let's talk about that, right? You talk yeah. about growing up in front of the people. People mm-hmm. might have been first introduced to you when they saw you, you know, win the award. What was that? The, the, uh, the Emmy? The Emmy. Yeah, you I know was like 33. I mean? mm-hmm. And it's like... Since then, I'm sure everybody and their mother was throwing projects your way. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you pick and choose to do and what not to do? Yeah, I mean, no, yeah. There is a thing of, like, people wanting to be in business with me, Mm -hmm. which is very flattering. But I have to make sure my business is specific. You Mm -hmm. know, I don't want to water down the brand. I don't want to just throw my name on stuff for for a check. Mm -hmm. Um, I really want my legacy to be pristine. Um, You know, you look at people like, you know, Sidney Poitier, you know, Harry Belafonte, people Mm -hmm. like Lena Horne. They really... If we look back at their bodies of work, mm-hmm. you can tell that they were very particular about what they were a part of. And, you know, even for me as a producer, you know, I'm very particular about, like, what artists I get behind and who I support. Uh, but, you know, for me, it's just about really raising the bar and mm-hmm. having quality content and it really being prestigious, mm-hmm. uh, you know, and being a part of conversations that often we maybe aren't a part of. Now, let's talk Queen and Slim a little bit. Yeah, now, yeah. now, for people that don't know, what's the premises of Queen and Slim? Break yeah, it down. it's basically a black man and a black woman are on a first date, a first tender date. date. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and it's not going great, but it's not going horribly either. Um, and he gives her a ride home. And uh, on the way home, they get pulled over by a police officer. And things escalate pretty quickly. And they ultimately end up killing the police officer in self-defense. Mm-hmm. And they make the decision to run, to go. And they ultimately become uh, these sort of icons overnight and, and and black people are like is this a new black panther is this what this is, is this what we doing now mm-hmm. and that's obviously was not their intent at all uh it was really a story about uh black people deciding to live deciding to survive yeah. a traffic stop which is i didn't even think about it but you know for us that's almost like a superhero story mm-hmm. um and and what happens is it's really about it's really a meditation on blackness and it's about about how black people live in this world always searching for freedom always trying to uh, justify the space that we take up in this country. And uh, and it really it was a story that came from somewhere deep down in my soul. And um, I'm really, I really kind of put my, my body, my blood, my sweat, my tears onto the celluloid. Melina Matsukas directed the hell out of the movie. Mm-hmm. Daniel mm-hmm. Kaluuya is phenomenal. We're introducing a new actress, Jodie Turner-Smith. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really, and the soundtrack is like, you know, crazy. That's available right now on Spotify and, uh, and iTunes. We got Lauren Hill to come and do something new for us. So it's just, it really is like the blackest movie that I think is, is going to come out this year. It sounds like a new uh, like a new version of Bonnie and Clyde, which I like, because one thing I always hate is when black people always compare themselves to Bonnie and Clyde. Right, I mean, you well, look, well, that's the thing for us. I mean, here's the thing. When you see the movie, you'll see that, it's, that the Bonnie and Clyde comparison is only skin deep. You know, mm-hmm. this, these are not two outlaws. They're not people who kind of like say, oh, we're going to take on, you know, we're going to just come out here and be criminals. They're really just two black folks living their lives, you mm-hmm. know, and um, ultimately people project something onto them. And I think we create the heroes that we need. 
And um, they ultimately become these sort of folk heroes for the community. Now, how, how hard is it to get a movie like this made? Because when you go to the theater, you go to the, the studio and you're like, look, it's a black guy killing a cop at a traffic stop. <laughs> 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 like, uh, like, well, here's the interesting thing. And this is a, a really I want to you know make sure this narrative is clear. It was not difficult to get the movie made. They came wow. after us. We were like Jesus Shuttlesworth and he's got game. You know, mm -hmm. like we, I had written this script um, that I knew was going to be potent and I knew was not going to be like the most easygoing movie, but I knew I wanted Melina to direct it because I, I was working on it while we were filming the Thanksgiving episode. Mm -hmm. And we had just bonded and like vibed and just who she is and how her brain works. And based on what I was writing, I was like, Melina, Melina got to direct this. So when I even mentioned it to her while we were filming, I was like, yo, I got this movie, man. I want you to direct it. She's like, okay, 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 we'll see. So sure enough, I finished the script and I ended up having dinner with Daniel Kaluuya. And um, and I had just finished it. And Daniel was like, what you working on? I was like, oh, I just finished this movie about these two black people. They kill a cop, say less. He's like, I want to read it. And so I was like, okay. And just he just wanted to read it for, for shits and giggles. And he did. And then he emailed me and was like, I, I got to be slim. He's like, I am slim. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I'm very flattered by that. I was like, but Melina got to read it first. And then if she decides to make this her first movie, she and I have to decide who Queen of Slim are going to be together. So if you don't mind, like, wait a beat, let her read it, and then I'll have her come to you. And that's what happened. She read it and was like, yeah, yeah, this is my first film. And I was like, okay, Daniel Kaluuya want to be Slim. And she was like, I don't know. I man. I don't think Daniel Kaluuya is our Slim. And I was like, I know. I, did, I wouldn't have thought of him either. I said, but just, I don't know. You should talk to him. She said, all right, I'll give him five minutes. Like, okay, classic. So she goes and sits with him for five minutes, and then, but it turns into five hours, and mm. then she offers him the role at the table. So now it's me, Daniel Kaluuya, and Melina and my fucking script. And um, and, and when the script kind of started going out and the, the buzz just started happening immediately, mm. people were like, what is this? And then all these studios like lined up and was like, what do we got to do to get it? And I was like, well, I want Final Cut, point blank period. What does that mean for us people who don't know Final that Cut language? means... We don't. We get the final say in what is on that screen. I get the final say on what was on the page, and me and Melina get final say on what was on the screen, mm -hmm. which is rare for first-time filmmakers. But I was like, that's what I need for this movie because of what I'm doing. Um, I said, I want to shoot it and release it in the same year because it's urgent. I said, I want a fat budget because I don't believe that black people should be sitting in the back of the bus when it comes to cinema. We should have these small budgets to make big movies. Um, and I said, I don't believe in test screenings. And test screenings are what happens when they get, they show the movie to a test audience and they say, oh, I didn't get this or I didn't understand that. I was like, one, I only will do one test screening. It should be 100% black audience. And what they say, I shouldn't have to be beholden to put it into the movie. Because sometimes we as the people may not be ready for certain things and say, oh, I didn't like that or mm -hmm. I didn't get this. Like, uh-uh, let me give you something you may not know you need yet. So, and, and Donna Langley was like, you got it. You got all that. Oh. If it means you'll give us the movie. That's mm -hmm. how they, they were like, we, we what can we do? They were sending us gifts. They were like writing us wow. notes. They were calling me on my cell phone, heads of studios. And I was like, yo, Melina, these white people want this movie. They want it bad. So I was like, let's let's make our demands. Let's come up with our list. And that was our list. And Donna, and Universal, uh, Make Ready, they were all like, boom. And also said, I won't take a note from a white person on this film. Word. Was the inspiration something that you were involved with the police getting pulled over or was just everything that's going oh, on Oh, yeah, in the she world? killed the cop. No. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say killed the cop. No, but no, 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 no. It could have been, <laughs> been something that she dealt with when she got pulled over No, time. and the funny thing is I haven't been in a uh, scenario in the one that which Queen and Slim are in. Like, you know, I've been pulled over before. But but mind you, mind you, I don't drink. I've never gotten a speeding ticket, nothing. But when I get pulled over, my heart starts racing and I start, like, sweating. And, and that's because of how, as a black person, I viewed the police my whole life. And that's right. even for me, like, being a young kid watching, you know, civil rights movement footage of, like, Absolutely. police officers using batons, hoses, horses on black people. So I've always sort of had a fear before we got to, you know, the Mike Browns, the Aaron Garners of the world, the Sandra Blands of the world. Um, but then now, because of that, I'm even more traumatized by the police. Mm -hmm. But um, but no, it was really this um, this this author, James Fry, who some people may or may not know, he, he kind of got into that controversy with Oprah about uh, A Million Little Pieces. Uh, he wrote a book, but he's he's just, you know, he's a guy who like comes up with ideas and stuff. He came up to me at a party and was like, yo, I have an idea for a movie that I can't write. He was like, two black people, you know, get pulled over, kill a cop in self-defense and go. And he had, a, he had a different title, he had a different outline. I was like, I don't want none of that. I said, I want that seed of an idea and I want to build the tree. So I was like, but as a, you know, I'm a fair person. So I was like, I would share a story by credit with you. I was like, but I'm gonna take it and go write this thing. And he was like, all right, cool, have at it. And so I went and really started developing Queen and Slim. And, and my biggest North stars were, she would be Malcolm X and he would be Martin Luther King. And by the end of the movie, they swap places. Mm -hmm. A lot of people like to say Lena Waif doesn't write. Why do they say that? I have no idea. What? Where'd you get that yeah. from? I don't know. Yeah. I just, you just hear that. You hear people say, Lena don't, Lena don't really write. Cite your sources. 
Oh, I don't got to say so. Like, that's just like a, a thing no. they say. I, you, I, and, and I, I only brought that up because you said just now I went to go right queen or something. I'm like, as far as I know, Lena Rice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, I mean, that's 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 what it is. I'm the one. I was in that room by myself, you know, with my laptop. But, that, but the funny thing is, I think it's interesting because people see me a lot. They they see me as an actor. They see me as a producer. And I think it may be difficult for folks to think like, oh, she's also writing scripts and she's mm-hmm. doing that thing. But that's really who I am before like the acting gigs became, you know, a part of my life. I've, I'm, I always consider myself a writer first, mm-hmm. but I get it. Like I'm in a Spielberg movie. I'm on Master of None. And I think you can go to Netflix any day of the week and go watch me on a TV show. And uh, but also, but I got an Emmy for co-writing uh, an episode of television. Mm-hmm. But anyway, and it says screenplay by Lena Wave when you go All see right. Queen of Slim. So I get it. I think it's kind of hard for people to wrap their brains around it but yeah I do I, I'm a writer do you like the stardom do I like the, the stardom meaning do you like being a star cause it's like yo you when you see Lena you're like okay Lena got the aesthetics of a star but do you like that role hmm some not always mm-hmm. you know it's tough you know when things happen on your shows and you gotta you know call you and have those conversations you know it, it's it there is a, a pressure that comes with that mm-hmm. because there's a thing about you know I believe in this world we like to have gods and mortals, mm-hmm. um, and mm. and I, I, I just feel like that can be a little dangerous because when you look at someone who is flesh and bone just like you, but yet you expect them to act like a god, it, things can get tricky. And I think mm-hmm. we, you guys, how many times has somebody come and sat in this chair and they're like, okay, this thing happened or I messed up here? The truth is, we're all human beings trying to figure it out. Right. None of us are perfect. Absolutely. You know, he who has not said cast the first song, mm-hmm. we're all trying to figure it out. And I think that's the thing that connects us, actually, is our humanity, is our is our the fact that we're all flawed. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I look, I'm the reason the, the st- part of the stardom I do like is the fact that I get to shed light on so many artists who I think are amazing, who mm-hmm. people may not otherwise care to look at or pay attention to. To me, any light I have, I want to share it and shed it on all these amazing artists that I come across every day. Before we get into all the, the fuck shit, because we got to talk about the fuck shit at some point. Okay. But I want to talk about Daniel uh, Kalula. Why did uh, the young lady have reservations about him? Because I was thinking because he's, he's a foreign actor and he was no. like a black American experience. No, uh, because she only she only thing she had seen was uh, Get Out. Get out. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. And she was like, I don't think that's the character. And I was like, look, I, he's a phenomenal actor. So I think he played the fuck out of that character. Mm-hmm. Um, I was like, but I also think that he could come and be a very interesting Slim. And funny, I, I didn't think of him for the part. I, didn't, I wasn't thinking of anybody. But when he said it to me, I couldn't shake it. I was like, oh, you know what? You you could be really amazing. And that's why I told Malina. I said, like, just give him a few minutes. And, and she did. And, and Daniel did the damn thing. And, he really, and he's been through some police stuff. And he's really, you know, been through a lot of those things. And so he was able to speak to it. And he's phenomenal in the movie. He is right. phenomenal. I can't wait for y'all to see him. What do you say to people who think that, you know, foreigners can't play these black American experiences? I think it's divisive. Mm-hmm. I think it's divisive. I think I, no police officer is not going to shoot and kill a black person because they have an English accent. Word. <laughs> yeah. True. So Word. y'all can take that to the bank. Word. Now you mentioned uh, being a star and you said you had to call up here and, mm-hmm. and straighten some things out. So mm-hmm. let's, let's let's break that down. So mm-hmm. you called Sh- Charlemagne one time. I know what we were going at the time. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I, I, that was when Jason Mitchell was released from the shot. Uh-huh. And you called up to explain what was going on. Right. And I know people were like, oh, Lena was talking in a circle. She wasn't saying a lot. But a big reason why is because here's the deal. I wasn't there, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I... And I hear from, you know, different people, you know, about their sides of the story. And everybody's side is different. Like, I've heard so many different things. Mm-hmm. So, to me, I didn't feel like it was right, you know, to to try to speak for someone or mm-hmm. try to say, well, this is this is what happened. Because for where I'm sitting, I wasn't, I wasn't there when it went down. So, mm-hmm. all I can say is, like, look, here's what I can do to ensure that I don't have that happen again. And that's what I ask people. It's like, look, hold me accountable. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's like, if this happens again on one of my sets, that's a problem, mm-hmm. you know? And so, and we have a thing now where we have intimacy coordinators on every single set of a show that I'm either I've written or I'm an EP on, which means they're there. There's there any sensitive scenes, any sort of um, intimate scenes. They're there to be the liaison for us and the actors. So that way the actors always feel completely safe and comfortable. And the big thing I've done with every single actor, and I have a lot of, projects I'm involved in mm-hmm. um, I always tell I say everybody has my number like I, my door is always open never feel like you can't come talk to me so for me I feel like I've grown so much from it and I've evolved so much because of it that to me it's like I I'm supposed to take hits you know how can I it, it's, it's like, impossible not to yeah right. you're supposed to you're, you have to but I think to me it makes me stronger it makes me more educated like I've educated myself so much about 
what it means to have a safe set. And the cool thing is, because I've gone through that, I've been able to talk to the ladies in Time's Up and have conversations with folks about how to make sure their sets can be even safer. So for me, it really was a, a thing that opened up my eyes and it was a lesson that I that I welcomed with open arms. Did you get a chance to watch uh, Jason Mitchell on The Breakfast Club? Yeah, I did. I did. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I thought to me, it, it, it seemed as if he's really uh, trying to work on himself and uh, and he seemed to acknowledge, you know, some things, uh, some things I, I didn't know about uh, that he, so he talked about. So, yeah. And also, I, and I always wanted him to to speak because, again, I'm not him. I wasn't there. And mm -hmm. I wanted to hear, too, you know, because I, I didn't hear not like he said, he and I haven't really got a chance to chat. So He's, he still doesn't really understand why I don't think he was let go from the shy or Desperado. Right. I don't think he, he understood. I mean, why. he holds himself accountable. He said he's just not sure exactly the reason what why. it is he did. Yeah, Desperado, I really can't speak to. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and and the, but even the shy thing is what I try to tell people. It's like I don't I don't own the shy. Mm -hmm. You know, I, and that's 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 just like the truth. And I don't think people even realize that. It's like when you create a TV show and you and so and you you celebrate about a, a, a network saying, yeah, we're gonna make it. But what's happening is they when you're selling a thing that you created to someone else so they can distribute it. Mm -hmm. So th I now lose ownership. So if they say, that's why I remind people, they have the power to fire me if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. I could be fired off the shy. Mm -hmm. That may sound crazy, but it's true because technically I'm an employee now, of that yeah. studio now. Mm -hmm. um, and so they told me, hey, you know, this is what's going on. And I was like, okay. Like, it'd be different if I was like fighting it. And I was like, mm -hmm. no, no. You know, like, I was like, okay, I understand. Yeah, let's let's make sure that, that no one on our set feels like unsafe or uncomfortable. Um, but but that was a decision that the the studio made, which also again there's a difference between a studio and a network. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't like Showtime said, "Oh, we're about to do this." Like no, the studio is pays for everything. They own it and they license the show out to Showtime. Right. Um, and so and uh, and I work for technically like the studio, you know, and also I work with the network. Um, but even like when we turn in cuts, it goes to the studio first. They give feedback, and then based off of that, we go, then it goes to the network. They give feedback, and then that's ultimately what you see. So there's a whole line, of, you know, of people in charge, and I'm at the bottom of the list. Not to the, to the general public though. Lena Waif is the shot. Right? Exactly. Look, yeah, I yeah, get yeah. it. I created it. Mm -hmm. I wrote that pilot. You know, what I'm saying I'm much more involved season three. Um, like, and I think this season is going to be, I think, one of our strongest and most grounded, and most human seasons, um, because I've actually gotten a chance to be involved from the day to day and like. Um, look, I did a pass on every script this season. Um, I may pop up in there every night, so just be on the lookout. But um, it's it's because the way I write is that I don't judge characters. I don't like to judge anyone. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and I feel like I feel like that that's what's going on this season is less judgment. And obviously, there's gonna be some changes. Like, yes, yeah, like you're not gonna have Brandon, you're not gonna have Jerrica. But what happens is we illuminate um, some of these other characters, and we have some new faces like Lala, Candy pops up, Luke James has a wonderful role. Mm -hmm. So we really Lil Rel. Lil Rel got popped up, up, ran up on us, and so it's just it's really a special season, and it's a season where you know we had some you know we had some some struggles in terms of what the show would be, and and I really kind of had to rise up and put the show on my back, and uh, and I hope people tune in, and I hope they really rock with us because the show is always bigger than one character or one mm -hmm. person. Uh, the shy is so many things and, and makes up so many people, so many different neighborhoods. So um, there's a lot of Papa this season too, which I think people are gonna be happy about. A lot of what? Papa. 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 Oh, yeah, 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 the kids. Yeah, the kids that kids should be a whole spinoff, by yeah, the way. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. The kids are growing up, man. They're like 14, 15, and we're not shying away from that. They vaping, they talking about having sex. Like, it's mm -hmm. real, it's real. Like, watching these scenes of them, like, getting older and, and mm -hmm. talking about That's girls right. and shit. And, mm -hmm. and also Papa questioning the what religion, that he's getting to that age where, you know, he's the son of a preacher. But it's that thing of, you know, and he sees his dad do some things that look questionable this season and so therefore he then starts to question his faith which is very interesting we get mm -hmm. into some stuff for real now, now you you once you said you wouldn't work with jason anymore but time has passed mm -hmm. you saw him on breakfast club holding himself accountable did that change your perspective in you know i don't think i can speak to it yet you know i think um we kind of have to let maybe some more time pass and, you why, know? and why did you say you wouldn't work with him anymore? let her finish no i was gonna say because people don't know that so well, eager well well no i mean i think <laughs> look i'll be honest it was a question i wasn't expecting you know but i think Charlamagne Charlamagne, does that yeah yeah exactly but Charlamagne, but it was a fair question to ask mm -hmm. um and a good question to ask and i think to me it's like if i'm talking to you about making sure that this won't happen again or making mm -hmm. sure the people know that I'm for the people and I'm for black women. Like I'm a person who is all about, you know, supporting us and making sure we, 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 we're good and we feel safe. I couldn't then have a whole conversation with you and then still be like, oh yeah, but if he ever wanted something, you know, we all good. To me, it's also about 
sometimes you you gotta change your behavior. Right. Yeah, you have to change your behavior. It's the best apology is change it's, behavior. Yeah, and so and that to me was what I felt like I needed to do, and and I can't align myself with with someone who is like you know if they're saying this is happening, this happened, this happened again over here. At some point, I have to kind of go. Okay, let me let me do my thing over here and make sure my shit is together. Um, but but again, I do think we're at a very turbulent time too right now. Mm-hmm. Like you know, who knows? Like a year from now, I don't know where things will be. So I think that's why my new answer to that is I, I just I, I can't speak to that. I really I really want everyone to work toward being better versions of themselves mm-hmm. and whatever that means. But for me right now, my company is all about safety we vetting people are we making sure we there are no uh too many instances with somebody where they will be on my set and and could could cause any sort of uncomfortability or harm to anyone on my set yeah because i found it interesting that nobody said anything in reply to jason after the breakfast club mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah like even the network was like no comment none, of the, was, none of the young women came out and said oh that was a lie i just i was like hmm i mean yeah i'm i'm a, I'm a person out there too you know and again yeah. but that's what it puts me in this tough spot because I'm not there. I even know it's like I, you know, it's like I, it's almost like I own a lot of companies. You know what I'm saying? And I can't be out at one company every single day. Mm-hmm. But again, that's why I made it very clear about the people that work with me and for me that they understand the mandate. It's like that will not be tolerated. Like because th- because again, it's like you you understand somebody like makes a mistake or doesn't do something right mm-hmm. one time. But that's what my company understands. It's like that can never happen again at Hillman Grab Productions under something that's under me. You know, and then sometimes it's true. It's like you don't always have control over actors. You don't know. I mean, you know, please. It's like, but, you know, but as show creators, we have to make sure we handle things the right way. But, yeah, but it's like I don't, I can't control, like, I can't control anyone, you know? Yeah, but yeah people, I don't you know, People that. don't understand, but you know what? The, the thing with the whole situation, we talk about what he's done, but nobody know what, what he's done. Like, we assumed it was sexual assault. I can't at one even time. really speak to it. I then can't even speak it was to it. And being aggressive, like nobody has ever said, "Well, he done this." You know, what I mean, that's why people are all confused. Yeah. yeah, no, I get it, and I get that people are frustrated. And it's like, look, I'm frustrated. I've been trying to get straight answers, like, what happened? What you know? But but even to me, like, I can't. I'm getting different versions from different people right. because again, everybody has their own version of the truth. And so that's why I wasn't going to come up here and say, well, this is exactly what happened. One, because I don't have a right to do that because I wasn't on set and mm-hmm. I wasn't there. Um, and also have to believe, you know, the, I have to believe women. I have to, and so therefore we made a change, a big change on our show. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I know some people were like, oh, you waited until this thing happened over here. It was like, look, like I didn't even know about that thing, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever happened on the Netflix movie, um, which I really can't speak to. So mm-hmm. at, at the end of the day, I have to. All I'm tasked with is okay. So now this is this. How we? How do we make the show great? How do we? Like I gotta. Because that's the thing people don't understand. It's like I gotta. I have to go right. I have to go right. I gotta go get in my bag. I gotta go produce this mm-hmm, TV mm-hmm. show. You know. So I know people want me to. You know, talk about this or spill that tea. It's like I don't have time. Like all I can do is make sure my sets are safe. Mm-hmm. You know, and I gotta make changes accordingly. And we have, and we have done that. And I've educated myself so much about what actors need and and and, um, and and protocol and just making sure everybody knows what I will not stand for. And I think folks are pretty clear on that now. And Jason said it himself. He said Lena Lena should not have received backlash because of my actions. Mm-hmm. Right. Did you Did you feel like the backlash was fair? Well, I mean, look, I'll be honest. I, I think black folks you know, fuck with me and they support mm-hmm. me. I mean, because somebody could look at, you know, where I'm sitting right now and, and, you know, I feel like I really got the support and the love from my people. And I, a lot of people actually came up to me and, and said, you know, in the interview, they appreciated the fact that I said, look, I'll take the hit. Like, I, if I'm the person whose name is on the show, even though I said, like, I didn't have a lot of power in those first couple seasons and I was, like, trying to figure it out, it's like, I, I, I'm the heavy as the head that wears the crown. You know, I can't enjoy the fruits of the labor and not deal with, you know, when some mm-hmm. shit happens, you know. So um, so a lot of people, you know, really said they were like, thank you for breaking down the roles of power and who's in charge and who's in charge of what. Um, and also you saying, hey, I wish I would have handled it differently. That was my thing, because I think and also in owning up to like me, uh, there was a place where I could have handled it better, mm-hmm. you know. And, and, and I but here's the deal. I think everyone in their lives has had an incident where they could have said, ooh, I could have, I could have dealt with that better. Yeah, I could have been more absolutely. sensitive in that scenario. So that's my thing is for, for my, my people who may be like, oh, Lena, da, da, da. I was like, all I ask them is like, yo, like, have you been in a situation where you could have handled it better? And if you, if you say, yeah, I just say like, then just rock with me and just know that I'm growing up in front of you. You know, I'm learning as I go. Like, I was, that, I, I sold that show when I was like 32. I was a first time show creator. I was like a baby mm-hmm. when I sold that show. And I didn't have a real, like, like any power, really. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was in there trying to like, trying to understand and learn. And then, of course, over the course of the show, I my profile kind of got a little bigger and I was doing other things. 
Um, and now that's why I have that power to say, yo, this will never happen on any of my sets ever again. If anyone ever allows it to happen, heads will roll. Gotcha. It's very hard just to grow, right? Because especially with social media, because yeah. every little thing, yeah, you're in front pick of people. Apart, yeah. You're like watching. You know, it's like you know, I'm I'm trying. The thing is, for me, why if it could be hurtful at all is because all I want is for black people to be successful and right. great and win. Like we we do, we are owed that. We are owed that. You know, and I would never ever stand by and allow you know, especially any woman, particularly a black woman be, you know, be hurt or abused and be not doing anything about it. Your situation is one of those situations that made me say, fuck it, man. And the reason I say that is I'm like, if y'all canceling Lena Waif, don't none of us stand a chance. Well, I, I'll say I'm this. Like, I'll say this. Because even black people come out and say <laughs> nobody was really on some cancel shit. Like, I, I will say that. I, I, I didn't see that. I think people were just sort of like, what? How, wait, Lena, what? was? It was more like, Lena, what's going on? What yeah. happened there? No one really was on that. I, I got to give the people credit because I know folks will be like, hold up, we weren't saying that. Um, but because seriously, because I felt so much love when, the, when we, when we uh, introduced the Queen of Slim like, teaser on the BET Awards. Everybody was like, Ugh. everybody was so excited. Right. So I think folks know, they, they have, a, they have a, a bit of a sense of who I am. And, um, and I think too, it's like, like I said, if some shit pop up again and again, if it becomes a pattern, please, Cancel my black ass, you know what I'm saying? But if it, but if you see that I made a change and I've grown and I've learned from that experience, then to me, I feel like you can see yourself in me because everyone has like stumbled or, or not done something the right way and then come back and, and, and been really stronger for it. Absolutely. Congra yeah. Congrats on the wedding too, Thank by the you. way. You got married. Welcome to the club. Trying to be, trying to be like y'all, you right. know? Congra okay, congrats. You know, a little bit. How's marriage so far? So far, so good. We're a few months in. So, okay. Uh, <laughs> no, but honeymoon, see, the honeymoon part. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. No, it's, it's, you know what? It's very very freeing. That's what marriage feels like. Because mm. I think a lot of people, you, when you think about it, you feel like, okay, you walk into a space and they, somebody closing the door. To me, it's like a, the ring gave me wings. Mm. It was like, oh, there's nothing I can't do or accomplish because I have someone that's going to have my back for the rest of my life. I got to write that one down, Miss Ryder. The ring gives me wings. I'm going to use that one at some point. I love being mad at you, baby. This ring gives me wings. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Anyway, you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Wow. It's like, you know, you have a partner, you know, and, and, and also, too, when you're talking about cancel culture, if the, even if the world did cancel me and everything went away, Alana's like, I'm never going to cancel you. I, you got that That's by your side. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's and the best I, feeling. And you just, I, I just feel like, you know, please, like, we, like we, we, we good. We good, no matter what. What made you want to do it right now? Or a few months ago, whenever you did it, what made you want? Well, no, I mean, we've been together for a little over five years now. Yeah. So we, and we, that's the thing, I, we've been engaged for like two years. It was just, it was just sort of time and, and my life got a little bit busier, you know, and her life is busy. She runs Michael B. Jordan's production company, mm -hmm. um, Outlier Productions. So she's in Germany right now. They're, they're, they're out there filming a movie. So we both have sort of been in our bag and, and working and grinding. And mm -hmm. uh, so, but we, we also want to just keep it small and, and, and intimate. Uh, and it was literally just she and I and our awesome photographer. Was that was that ever a dream for you growing up? Because it wasn't even legally possible for you. You know what I mean? Right. It's so. funny. It's, it's it's not a thing I necessarily thought about every single day or all the time. But um, but yeah. But once I fell in love with her in that way, I was like, oh, I, yeah, I want to get married. I want to be married to you. Yeah. Um, and uh, and luckily she wanted to be married to me. And uh, but we always felt like we were married too. It always felt like that. We like we moved in pretty quickly, and like we just caught a vibe and and I just wanted to make it official. I wanted to I wanted to put a ring on it. You know what I mean? How did y'all meet? We met in a general meeting <laughs> in uh in uh, uh in, in Los Angeles. Funny we're both from Chicago, funny mm -hmm. enough, and born in the same month, same year. Um and wow. yeah, it was crazy. But we just did, we never crossed paths there. But we just met in a general meeting and there was no no nothing going on there at that point. I was very professional and we just kept bumping into each other and all that kind of stuff. And then one day we just uh like we we went to have drinks and uh, and we just something just clicked. It was it was different, and we've been hanging out. We've been together ever since. Oh, yeah. So I, I'm a, I'm very decisive. I was like, mm, yep, this is it. This is the one. This is it. This is it. What no made you one. keep it to yourself and not announce it to the world immediately? Yeah, I think because we wanted to have something to ourselves a little bit. It's that thing you mm -hmm. talk about, you know. And I do. I share my life, and you know, and I'm very you know interactive with folks, and and I love people. I love talking to folks. I love interacting with people. I think it makes me a better artist. And people will tell you, I, I'll respond to DMs and Twitter and all that kind of stuff, and people always ask for advice on how to be writers but that one we really want to enjoy being married just to ourselves for a little bit right. um and then you know and then when the opportunity came i think i was on ellen it was like all right you know and also people they see the ring i refer to her as my wife now in certain interviews so we didn't mind saying something but it really uh we just kind of want to have some to ourselves for a little bit that's all you know how that go absolutely yeah well i can't wait to see queen and yeah queen i can't slim. wait for y'all to see <laughs> envy you know what you should buy the theater yeah. Buy you the theater. What? You got the money. You, you know. You know what, Charlemagne? 
You and I should buy the theater, Charlamagne. Yeah, uh-huh. I do that all the time. Uh-huh. I do. I know I am going to uh-huh. do it. Charlamagne, you uh-huh. and I, together I, I, I first of all, I already you got planned. Malcolm Ryan neck. Come yes, on. I already had planned to do that anyway. Okay. I, I'm going to so, do that. Okay. Yeah. I do that all the time for black movies. Like when it's black yeah. movies and it's black creatives, yeah. I do it. I'm oh, yeah. with you all the time. I'm with you. Come on, man. Queen of Slim, 1127. And again, my thing is, if this movie does numbers, it'll change things for us because then it's not just about getting black movies made, but it's about getting black movies with Final Cut, raw black movies, mm-hmm. black movies that, that um, are presented in our native tongue. That's the thing about this movie. It's like there's no code switching. There's no explaining. It's like when white folks come and see this movie, they're going to get a real sense of what it's like to see the world through the black lens. Eddie, so, set that up. Set the uh, please the theater up. All right, he knows. Did you just tell him to set the theater up? He's no, like, I do, I do he's that like, He's time. like, uh-huh, uh-huh. He's going to hear nodding, nodding. Yeah. Nine. All right. I appreciate y'all. Free popcorn on me, free drinks on Envy. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Not alcoholic <laughs> drinks. Not though. alcoholic drinks. Like, <laughs> soft drinks. Just Spray. Dr. Pepper, nigga. All right, it's The Breakfast Club. It's Lena Waithe. Hey.